So what's going through Clyde's mind when he's being ambushed and he sees his younger self? He imagines him. Well, in in my mind, this stuff that 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 whole younger self stuff has been added in in tech. Mm -hmm. It was wasn't in any of our runs. It was it was something that we came up with uh, much later. Um, and he, the young Clyde, had always showed up after I killed the um, the guard, uh, the the deputy. I mean, mm -hmm. he always showed up and does his little bang, bang, you're dead, like, and it was more of a sort of like, oh, see where he's come from when he was just pretending and playing Cowboys and Indians and now it's real. And and now it's turned into sort of a haunting for him. Um, so he sees him then, he sees him at the end, and that was the second thing we added in where he sees him at the end and he just, he can't stand this, what he's become, so he tries to destroy it. And the monologue was the last part that was added. The monologue was always just a monologue. It was just presented as a sort of soliloquy um, uh, to the audience, to himself, as a sort of brooding on what it's like to kill someone. And it's, it's mostly directly taken from uh, an indirect quote from him that his sister wrote in a book. Mm -hmm. She asked him what it's like to kill someone, and, and this was his response. And so what we kind of made it into was he sees his younger self and, and, and it's really, in my mind, it's, it's sort of like the ultimate defense mechanism. It's like, well, how can I justify all these things that I have done? How, how have I become this person? So he sees his younger self, and he instructs him, and he's like, this is what it's going to be like. And so in his mind, he's like, well, I always knew, or I must have, I must have always known that this is what it was like. There's, there's no way that, that I could have gotten to this point without having you know, somebody instill upon me this, this coldness. And, uh, it's, it's really just a bizarre, a bizarre take on, um, on how he, how he tries to put things in order to justify his actions. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite song to perform? Right now, I guess. You know, I have a bunch I, I used to think that... I used to like Bonnie the best. That was my tub. favorite when I saw it. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Uh, now I'm still getting... We used to, I have the uke in it. And I used to just strum, and now I'm doing a lot of picking, and I'm still trying to get... I'm uh, <laughs> still a little bit nervous with it. Mm -hmm. So I think until until I'm like 100% cool with the picking, that, that'll be number two. And number one is is probably a tie between Raise Little Hell, mm -hmm. which is the big prison number, which is just the rawness. And I also really love the song we sang at the beginning of Act 2 with Bonnie after he kills the deputy, um, where he goes from the regret and the trying to piece together, trying to, like I said, trying to justify, you know, it was him or me. Like, yeah. oh, well, he had his gun on me. Like, it was his fault. Yeah, exactly. Into that, into Bonnie leaving and him trying to get her to stay and just getting pissed off and almost like, you know, really hurting her to this... This sick, sexy, sort of yeah. sexy, oh, yeah. driven, like roman romance. It's it was it goes through so many different levels. It's like a four act play, and 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 it's really fun to perform. Well, it's fun to perform it with her, and everybody loves oh, yeah. everybody. But when you book the show in Sarasota, do yeah. you say do you say to your girlfriend? She's like, oh my god, you got the part that's great. Who's playing Bonnie? You're like, funny <laughs> story. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she always. I she mean, Laura's always been it. with it. She knew, and when I auditioned for it. You know, I was like, she's like, oh, that's Laura's, that's Laura's show. I was like, yeah, it's crazy, right? She's like, that's great, you know. So <laughs> it, she's she never had any sort of, any sort of qualms in their friends. The theater and, world's uh, a small world. It's so small. I mean, it's it's hilarious, but I mean, it, those little stories are, are 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 fun. I think. Didn't you tell Jeff Calhoun? Didn't you say, can't you wait to do Newsies next fall? Couldn't you just sort of? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, actually. Or I, next spring. You know, to be honest with you, I don't think. If Jeff hadn't been doing newsies, I don't think I would have done it in Paper Mill. Mm -hmm. Just because no other director in their right mind would have cast me in Good a show enough. knowing that... Because he cast me before Bonnie and Clyde had a date. Wow. And he was like, and he was like, you might have to do some double duty. I was like, I don't awesome. care. Awesome. <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't care. I want to do newsies. Yeah. You know, and uh, he's like, all right, all right. But just so you know, and it was like, what, like two and a half weeks of... of uh, of hell back and forth hell I, I did lose my mind for a few days 
are you, is it like a when, when you were both doing shows is it like a monastery at home where you both just like totally quiet at home <laughs> yeah well you know well, the only time we were both doing shows was when I was doing Newsies mm-hmm. and right when I started this but I was when I was doing Newsies I was either in tech mm-hmm. or I was rehearsing during the day so you were no one around. was home <laughs> <laughs> and when someone was home it was her by herself <laughs> Now, you watched Newsies and you loved it as a little kid, but you were not into theater. But your grandmother was. I mean, she was directing. I wasn't not into theater, but I didn't you weren't. do it. I mean, I, I didn't really care what. But, but your grandmother dragged you into Pied Piper she Hamlin, did. and you she were like... She did. Well, you did your research. Well, what was she what, was she involved in the theater a lot? Or, or? She, yeah, she, she directed the, uh, the youth program at oh, our cool. community theater. The small little community theater in Corpus Christi, Texas. Um... You know, we didn't have any sort of professional anything anywhere nearby. So that was really it. And uh, at school, uh, the I was always in choir. And mm-hmm. the theater program and the choir program didn't get along. Just like Unbelief. Yeah, but, exactly, exactly. But so when you're in choir and someone spots you and they offer you a part in a play, what play was that? I We did a, we did a, a choir concert my freshman or sophomore year at the community theater and someone from there was like hey we need somebody to do uh the lead role in this in this we're doing the summer camp with kids and and it's kind of a tough role so we want to make sure we have somebody and we think that you'd be great in it i was like "Mm, okay as long as i don't have to pay because everybody (laughs) else had to pay yeah (laughs) and i got cast as a lead in bugsy malone oh but then they realized that bugsy doesn't sing (laughs) so i got cast as the bad guy dandy dan you were already you were like getting non singing roles because then the Fantastics was the role the role yeah. that really started to matter. Well, for you. I, I ended up playing Danny Dan who had a song, mm-hmm. and then from that somebody saw somebody from the theater saw that and they were like we need we need more um, we need more chorus guys for our production of South Pacific. So I was like okay, I'll do that, mm-hmm. and then from then on it just kind of I did that and then I did Joseph where I played one of the brothers, and then I did. Uh, the Fantastics. No, they did. Then I did Gypsy, where I played a one of the younger boys. Mm-hmm. Um, well, no, one of the grown up. Well, the the grown up version of the young kids. And, and then I did The Fantastics, where I got cast as a mute. And that's kind of when I actually caught the acting bug. Because before that, I was just singing and yeah. having a good time and just playing around on stage. And and, uh, and then I was like, well, maybe there's something in this. And that's when you got serious in a way. Well, yeah, I I I, I got. You know, as serious as you can be, being like, you know, the hot new ticket in Corpus Christi community theater. Well, your grandmother was into the arts. Your parents, when they weren't getting married, what were they? What were they doing? What were their careers? <laughs> um, you know, my 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 grandma uh, did that for a while, and then she stopped. But her and my mom worked together in a, with a tax company for years and years and years and years. My mom also... Um, and why do you do your own taxes? Can't you get your mom to do it? No, they did a realty tax. They worked to the realty tax company. Oh, okay, okay. I, I like doing my own taxes. Granted, I can't do them anymore. It's too complicated. Yeah, it's getting to be too much. That's a good problem. But I was always a math geek. Like, I wanted to be in computers and stuff when I was growing up. So I You were a math always, elite? I was never <laughs> a math elite or anything, but I always loved the problem solving. Mm-hmm. And so that doing taxes was kind of similar to that. It kind of just... In a strange way, it kind of zens me out a little bit to 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 uh, to do things like that. But anyways, they they worked in that. My mom uh, helped to manage a bingo hall for a while and and work with charities there. And uh, now she's just doing the the tax service. And my grandma's retiring. 